In this video, we'll calculate a couple different measurements for what the radius of the 1s atomic orbital is in our hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model system. So we have our proton fixed at the origin. We have an electron, which is at some distance r from that proton at the origin. It has a mass of me, and it's allowed to move around anywhere in space. So what we're going to do in this video is try to compute what is this average radius or, or some kind of measure for what the radius that this electron likes to hang out at for the 1s or the ground state atomic orbital. So we'll remind ourselves that in three dimensions the expectation value or the average value of a given property A would be equal to the integral over all space, so integral minus infinity to infinity dx minus infinity to infinity dy, minus infinity to infinity dz, of psi star of xyz times a, the operator representing that property, acting on psi of xyz. So this would be our integral there. Our wave functions here are not in terms of the three-dimensional Cartesian xyz, but are in terms of the spherical polar r, theta, and phi, radius, polar angle, and azimuthal angle. So we are going to modify this to integrate in the terms of spherical polar instead of Cartesian. So the first thing to notice is that the bounds of integration are going to be different. We're going to integrate phi from 0 to 2 pi. That's the 360 degrees it can go in the xy plane. We're going to integrate theta from 0 to pi. It can be at 0 degrees where it's coincident with the z-axis up to 180 degrees at the minus z-axis. And the values of r are constrained to positive values or non-negative values from 0 all the way to infinity. So we're going to integrate r from 0 to infinity. But there's one extra catch, and that catch is that the volume element now is not dx, dy, dz. The volume element of these three different sides are dr, r d theta, and r sine theta d theta. So if you're unclear on why that is, you can watch my math review video on volume elements for integrals. So what this means is what we actually need to integrate whenever we're integrating in spherical polar over all space is we do an integral from 0 to 2 pi of d phi integral 0 to pi of sine theta d theta, and integral from 0 to infinity of r squared, 1 r from here, 1 from there, r squared dr, psi star r theta phi, times the operator a acting on psi of r theta phi. All right, so what we're looking to do here is to compute the average radius. So the operator for average radius is just multiplying times r. So we integrate 0 to pi, or sorry, 0 to 2 pi for d phi, 0 to pi for d theta, 0 to infinity for dr, psi star 1, 0, 0, the 1s orbital, times r times psi 1, 0, 0, then times the extra volume elements r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi. <clears throat> Okay, the 1s orbital luckily is real, so its orbital equals its complex conjugate, which is equal to 1 over the square root of pi, z over a naught to the 3 halves, times e to the minus zr over a naught. We'll remind ourselves that z for the proton is equal to plus 1, just how many, what's the integer charge in units of charge of the electron. And a naught is the Bohr radius, which is 0 0.529 angstroms, which is uh, called a single Bohr, and is going to be the unit of distance that we're going to use in this video. Okay, so this expectation value, if we can factor out this integral into three separate integrals of phi, theta, and r, there's no phi dependence in psi or in our operator. So we have integral 0 to 2 pi d phi gives us 2 pi. The integral from 0 to pi of sine theta d theta gives us 2. It ends up being uh, cosine negative cosine pi minus cosine 0, I believe. So we have, And then we have the integral from 0 to infinity of we're basically squaring our wave function now because psi star times psi 
a multiplication commutes, we can move this r to combine it with that r to make r cubed. And we square everything in here, giving us 1 over pi. z over a0 to the 3 halves squared is z over a0 cubed. z is 1, so we have 1 over a0 cubed. r cubed gives our r times r squared. And e to the minus 2r over a0, which is this times, it's, this, uh, times 2. All right, so factoring those things together, we get our average value of r is equal to 4 pi over five, pi, which cancels 1 over a naught cubed. We've factored out those constants. Integral 0 to infinity, r cubed e to the minus 2r over a naught dr. At this point, we're looking for an integrals table, which has one of these integrals that we can look up. So we would do the integral from 0 to infinity, x to the n, e to the minus ax dx which equals n factorial over a to the n plus 1. So here, if we look at what makes this integral look like that one, n, the power of x for r, is going to be 3. And our value of a is going to be 2 over a0, which makes this look like e to the minus ax. So substituting that in, we take everything outside, which was 4 over a0 cubed. So we have 4 over a0 cubed, 3 factorial, times 2 over a0, 1 over that is a0 over 2. That to the 3 plus 1 is that to the 4th. Gives us 24 a0 to the 4th over 16 a0 cubed. The denominator cancels, cancel out, leave 1 a0 on top. So the expectation value for the radius which is the mean value of the radius for the 1s orbital, is 3 halves times the Bohr radius. So we have that plotted on our graph up here. We have 3 halves times the Bohr radius is our expectation value, or the mean value of the radius. So that's one measure of what the radius of a hydrogen atom is. That's the average, or the mean value. There's a second value we can get by looking at the radial distribution function. So the radial distribution function takes into account this volume element here. So see how we have this r squared here? So there's, gonna, there's quadratically more area of our, of our surface, of our sphere, as we go out in r. The surface area of a sphere as we go out is proportional to r squared. So if we multiply our radial wave function times its complex conjugate, then times r squared, we get the probability density as a function of r times the amount of surface area at that value of r. So what we get is called the radial distribution function, which I'm calling pln of r. So what the condition we have here is that the integral from 0 to infinity of pln of r is equal to 1. So if I, if I take my uh, 1s orbital, multiply it times its complex conjugate. In this case, it's real, so I'm just squaring it. Then I multiply that times r squared, setting z equal to 1. I get my radial distribution function for the 1s function is 4r squared over a0 cubed e to the minus 2r over a0. So that looks like this function here. r squared starts out at, the, at very low values. It looks like a parabola in the beginning. Then that decaying exponential takes over, and it, looks, and it reaches a maximum and decays away exponentially into nothing as distance gets very large. So there's a special value of the radius that we can find if we take the first derivative with respect to r of this radial distribution function, set it equal to 0. That radius is called the most probable radius. So the place where the first derivative of r is equal to 0 and the second derivative is negative, that is the most probable radius where we are most likely to find the electron of any value of r. Alright, so if we take the first derivative with respect to r of this function, what we get is the ddr of this times the inside there. We get two different terms due to the product rule and the chain rule but you can factor it into the following form. I have 8r over a0 cubed times 1 minus r over a0 times e to the minus 2r over a0 equals 0, as we need it to be. So there are three critical points here. 
one of which is the minimum value of r is zero. So at zero, r equals zero, this r is zero. At r equals infinity, e to the minus two r over a naught equals zero. And at r equals a naught, one minus r over a naught is equal to zero. So at r equals zero, you can plug in the value here of p and l, it's actually zero. At r equals infinity, the value is zero again, thanks to the exponential. But at r equals a naught, that's where the actual maximum in this function is. So our most probable radius of our 1s atomic orbital is actually the Bohr radius for a hydrogen atom. So this tells us that the most likely place we are likely to find an electron for our 1s atomic orbital is at the Bohr radius. So this may be why the Bohr radius was, was showing up and was very important in calculations for the Bohr model of the atom. So it's not the average value of R, but it is the most probable value of R. This tail is a heavy tail, so the average is further out than this, which would I, we would call the mode or the most likely value of this function. All right, so there's a third metric we could use, and this would be the percent radius of the function. So the integral from zero to a certain distance of the radial distribution function with respect to r could equal some value. So what value would we want this to equal? So we could choose what's the 50% value. So there's a 50% chance the particle is at a the electron is closer than that, 50% chance it's further than that. We could do a 90% radius, where the 90% of the electron density is inside that radius. We could do 95, we could do a lot of values. So this value would be a percentile radius. And whenever we show plots of atomic orbitals, typically what we're showing in that shape is a 90% radius function. So if you actually wanted to get what that surface is, then you would integrate uh, this function such that it equals that 0 0.9 for this value to get that 90% radius of our function. But what we saw here is that there are multiple different metrics for what the radius of the hydrogen 1s orbital is. We saw that the most probable radius is the Bohr radius A0, 0 0.529 angstroms but the mean, the expectation value of the radius is actually larger than that, three halves A naught.